If your car could gain miles while you sleep, would you still think about gas stations the same way? That's the question I carried to Scottsdale, Arizona, where a crowd of believers, skeptics, and the plain old curious lined up to see Aptera up close. In the shade of a building, the car was quietly sipping sunlight. Yes, even there, it was pulling power. Not a stunt, not a slideshow. Real hardware, real time. But is it ready? That's what I went to find out. My story with electric vehicles started a few years back with a simple goal. Shrink our footprint and see what daily life looks like without gasoline. We bought a Model Y, loved the transition, then added a Model 3. Over time, the rhythm of charging, skipping gas stations, and planning trips differently became normal. But Aptera planted a different seed, one about efficiency so radical it bends how we think about a car. I reserved one in 2022, and yes, we invested as well. Eyes wide open that startups are bumpy roads. When production begins, that commitment nudges us into a launch edition slot. We didn't get in as accelerators, but we made the second phase when crowdfunding was closing. We knew the risk. We also knew why we cared. When the Scottsdale invite landed in my inbox, I didn't even mention it to my wife at first. It felt impractical, too far, too much going on. Then she reminded me, we have a friend in the area. One conversation later, flights were booked, trip solved. And honestly, we're newly retired and hunting for little adventures. This one checked every box. The event ran from mid-afternoon into the evening with test drives later. It was free to attend, and there was also an optional paid session inside to chat with the team, including Chris Anthony. The line outside never really died down. Picture a steady current of people, some already reserved, some invested, all buzzing. The final headcount hovered around 500. If you've followed Eptera for a while, you'll recognize the demographic. A lot of seasoned tech fans, EV adopters, and people who've seen a few cycles of promise and reality. The mood was upbeat, social, curious, critical in a good way. You could feel a community looking for proof points and momentum. Up close, the car looked more complete than I expected. Fewer rough edges, more, this could be real soon. People tapped panels, tested switches, poked at seams, politely, but with purpose. Staff kept repeating a useful refrain. Some pieces were still pre-production, a handful 3D printed to keep costs sane before tooling. The license plate bracket, for example, seemed flimsy off the car until it snapped magnetically into place. Pre-production, they said. Tooling next. The interior is where curiosity met confirmation. The UI wasn't a mock-up. It was live and connected to the car. We opened windows, toggled turn signals, poked through menus. At one point, the AC kicked on. A team member slid into the driver's seat, killed it, hopped back out. No drama. HV works. The tactile feel of the interface leaned simple and intuitive rather than look at all our features. Compared to a Tesla, where you can swim a while through menus, Aptera's screen felt uncluttered. Fewer choices, fewer rabbit holes, just the stuff you need. Not everything is there yet. CarPlay and Android Auto weren't active, and the rear view camera wasn't functional. But the basics you'd want on day one? They were alive. Now, about the solar. Remember, the car spent much of its time in shade, and it still showed a trickle coming in. You won't power a road trip in the shadow of a building, but that quiet, constant intake, even when you aren't trying, changes how you think about range. Panels spanned the tailgate and the dash. The rear hatch looked like glass with encapsulated panels, matching the top of the vehicle's look. The idea that you could hike all day, come back, and have gained, rather than lost, 
Some charge isn't just marketing poetry. It's the kind of small compounding advantage that matters over weeks and months. You can learn a lot from edges and undersides, so we peeked at the undercarriage. Clean packaging, sensible protection, a design that feels like the product of a thousand small decisions. Open the rear, and you find a sub-trunk. Not cavernous, but purposeful. Plus, solid D-rings built in for strapping cargo. Not decorative, substantial. Then there's the hinged license plate. It swings to reveal the charge port. It's one of those, of course, solutions. Simple, tidy, too obvious in hindsight. Seating surprised me most. At a glance, the seats are flat and minimal. Is this going to be comfortable? But sitting down told a different story. For the errands, commuting, and quick trips this vehicle is built for, I felt right at home. On an all-day, multi-hundred-mile marathon, you might want to shift around, but that's true of many cars. The everyday comfort box felt checked. Fit isn't only about seats, it's about people. A very tall attendee, north of 6'6", climbed in and proved that height alone doesn't rule you out. The team suggested that somewhere around 6'6 to 6'8 is where things may start feeling tight and they're still tweaking seat height and travel. Watching that tall guest fit made an impression. A lot of folks are going to be fine. Visibility is the one area that asked me to adapt. The split rear glass leaves a bar right about eye line for many people. It's not a deal breaker, it's a learn the car moment. The left right camera feeds above the wheel are crisp and conveniently placed. They'll do a lot of work for you. Once the rear camera goes live, that triangle of situational awareness, mirrors, side cameras, rear feed, should feel natural. On day one, I'd tell a new driver, move your head a little more than you're used to until your brain rewires the habit. Little touches peppered the day. There's a knock to open interaction that confused a few folks at first. It wants the right spot, and a slower rhythm. Once taught, it clicked, literally. The blinking rear light you see on some videos, that's just camera shutter versus LED refresh. The human eye sees it as a solid bar and the odd little light by the plate. That's a requirement for auto cycles, specific brightness, specific coverage. Sometimes the most mundane details carry the most regulation. The inside session with the team offered the cautious optimism you want from a company at this stage. Testing is ongoing. Tooling is a mountain of money. Crash testing is a gate they're eager to cross and not something you rush. No one promised miracles or dates that can't hold water. I didn't walk away thinking, this hits showrooms in six months. I walked away thinking, they're doing the work. It's moving. For anyone considering investing, I'd repeat the wisdom we followed. Never stake what you can't afford to lose. Believe in the mission. Understand the risk. Who was in the crowd? A lot of people who've seen a few product cycles, retirees, engineers, tinkerers, early adopters with patience. Also, plenty of couples who see this as a second car that does 80% of life beautifully commuting, errands, day trips, weekends with luggage. For families with kids, it's not the everything mobile, but as a hyper-efficient daily, it's a compelling answer. I kept circling back to the original question, is America ready for a vehicle like this? Maybe the better question is, who is ready for it? Not everyone, and that's okay. Progress rarely starts with everyone. It starts with a core who say, I can make this work, and it makes sense for how I live. For those people, Aptera is not a novelty. It's a strategy. Energy costs, range anxiety, maintenance. This flips a lot of old math on its head. By the time the sun dropped and the chatter settled, I felt clearer than when I landed. A lot is already real. 
A few pieces still need to click into place. Software integrations, rear camera, tooling for production parts. The car feels further along than the last time I saw it in person. And the difference is the difference that matters. You can touch it, sit in it, make the AC turn on, watch the solar trickle in. It stops being a promise and starts being a machine again. Here's where I land. Aptera won't be for everyone. It doesn't have to be. For the people, it does fit. A second vehicle that covers most of life, a commuter that quietly adds miles in your driveway, a weekend explorer that lets you come back with more charge than you left with. It feels more than plausible. It feels smart. If you followed from reservation to road test, you already know patience is part of the deal. After Scottsdale, my patience feels better informed. I saw enough to stay excited, enough to stay realistic, and enough to picture the day someone asks in a parking lot, what is that? And the answer matters less than the experience. If a car can make you rethink how often you need a plug, maybe that's the nudge the future needed all along. Call to if you found this helpful and want more deep dive EV stories, real world tests, and clear no hype breakdowns, subscribe to Ride the Future. Join the community that asks better questions and gets closer to the answers.